Okay, for today lecture, um, Dr. Nazri has uh, something uh, urgent uh, to cater to. So, I will uh, be replacing him lah for today. Um, you guys already uh, received the lesson plan, kan? So, if you uh, look on the lesson plan, so my part should be to, uh, next week. So, me and Dr. Nazri, we will be switching uh, our topics. Okay, for my topic today, uh, this semester, we will uh, explore a new chapter on cytology. So last semester, I believe you guys already uh, finished uh, brilliantly in the gynae cytology. So this semester, we will talk about the non-gynae cytology. So non-gynae means uh, any other samples, uh, specimen coming from uh, the various parts of our body uh, other than uh, gynae. So it's very simple. Okay, uh, the same um, objective in uh, whether in gynae or non-gynae uh, preparation of specimens, the end product that we uh, after is the accurate interpretation of cellular materials, and this uh, ability to achieve the accurate interpretation uh, depends on the few depend on a few factors so the among the most important factors uh, includes a method of specimen collection so these methods of specimen collection uh, for us uh, cytotechnologists cytoscientists uh, we don't really have uh, um, a full control uh, this basically uh, majority of the, the, the procedure uh, performed by uh, the pathologists or the, the surgical, the, the, the doctors that are attending the patient. So this part, although uh, we cannot control it, uh, bear in mind, it is also one of the main uh, factors that can affect the quality uh, of the uh, specimen that we receive. Uh, so for the second part, beginning from the second part, uh, this is uh, our part, so we can control this this uh, this area uh, in order to achieve the accurate interpretation. So the second uh, factors is the pre preservation of weak specimens before processing. So we will talk uh, more on that later. And the third is the preparation of material for microscopic examination. So this is basically uh, the point from you. You receive the sample uh, in the lab. Uh, you do uh, cross examination. You uh, you look on the gross appearance uh, on the volume of the sample, and then you you prepare until the end product uh, production of uh, slides for uh, examination of cytomorphology. So from A to Z, beginning from receiving receiving the sample until we we able to produce a very good uh, cytology slides for examination. Uh, fourth, fixation and fixative. Uh, this includes uh, together in the microscopic examination. So this is where uh, the part where uh, we need to fix the cells on the smear. For gynae, uh, we only have uh, one method, which is um, wet fixation or uh, alcohol uh, fixation for pet uh, stain. But for uh, non gynae uh, we have two main methods here, uh, which are, uh, in includes, first of course, uh, wet uh, fixation for pep stain, and second, air dry uh, smear for uh, Romanovsky stain. And the fifth, staining and mounting of the cells sample. So more or less, will be, this would be the same um, Whatever you did uh, in histology, histology and cytology, uh, when when we achieve, uh, uh, reach the part for mounting, we we will be using uh, DPX, and there are a few things that we need to uh, be careful of uh, when doing that. Okay, first uh, method of specimen collection, example of non-gynae specimen, so the 
the body fluids includes uh, urine, pleural fluid, pericardial, CSF, synovial, and acetic fluid. So this is among the, the, the main uh, samples uh, or specimen that I listed here, but there are uh, a lot more. Uh, whatever fluid that can be uh, collected from our body, we can send it to cytology lab for non-guiding specimens. So you can imagine uh, things like uh, saliva, uh, sputum, any mucus, any secretions, any um, cyst fluid. Second, we have fine needle aspiration cytology. This is a technique used to obtain material from organs that do not shed cells spontaneously. So first, on the body fluids, uh, we are talking about the fluid is already accumulated in the area. So uh, the doctor just uh, perform a minor surgery to collect the fluids. But for fine needle expiration, uh, this is a technique um, used to obtain material from organs that do not uh, actually shed cells spontaneously. So uh, there are procedures like a minor surgery that need to be performed using a, uh, a syringe where the doctor will, will uh, exactly like the process of uh, taking blood. So the, the shrink will be a bit uh, bigger. So this is the process where uh, cells will be, uh, or fluid will be sucked from the uh, affected area or organs that they need, need to be examined. FNSC is a variable in the diagnosis of lesions of the breast, uh, thyroid, lymph nodes, liver, lungs, skin, soft tissues, and bones, uh, among others. So second part in uh, how do we make sure that the, the, the end product, the examination of the cell uh, is, uh, is uh, accurate. So second, preservation of fluid specimen before processing. So imagine that uh, you already uh, work in a cytology lab. So this is the, the first uh, process of collecting the samples and receiving the sample where preparation of smears from fresh specimens are preferred. So most of the non gyne uh, slides being prepared uh, actually coming from a fresh specimens. They mean they uh, were just collected and within one or two hours, they already reached the lab and uh, the, the MLT and the medical lab scientists already uh, begin to prepare the slides from these uh, specimens. So fresh specimen, uh, preferred and majority of the uh, the, the process uh, were performed on fresh samples. But if uh, certain uh, situation, for example, uh, the sample uh, was received after office hours or in uh, the holidays uh, or weekends. So these uh, specimens uh, received must be processed uh, must be kept, sorry, must be kept in the uh, refrigerator uh, in the temperature between two to eight and never freeze the specimens. Uh, this is because we are, we are dealing with examination of cells. So we know that uh, freezing of cells will, will uh, destroy the morphology, uh, will uh, lead to uh, lysis of the uh, cells. So never uh, kept the samples uh, for non gyne in uh, the freezer. So there are various types of specimen that we we might receive in non gyne lab. Um, uh, I just mentioned earlier that uh, non gyne consists of any fluids or cells that uh, will be available in our body. So, they will be, they, this fluid will come in various um, uh, what you call uh, appearance uh, or constituents. So we know that uh, saliva is uh, different from mucus, different from blood, uh, different from your uh, synovial fluid, your CSF. So first we talk on specimen with high mucus uh, content. 
So for example, uh, sputum, uh, anything coming from the resp respiratory tract, such as uh, bronchial brushing, bron bronchial uh, aspirates, uh, bronchial washing, and etc. Uh, they may be preserved uh, by refrigeration for uh, around one day. And if uh, somehow uh, the, the doctor or the pathology requests, uh, usually uh, this is uh, very seldom being performed for, for uh, sputum or bronchial brushing samples, but sometime maybe the, the condition of the sample, the sputum is too thick or the doctor uh, uh, personally requests by the pathologist uh, to, to break down the mucus so we can mix uh, this uh, specimen with high mucus content with a, a special fixative that will lyse the, the mucin. So we can mix an equal part of mucus with uh, sarcomanos fixative, which is uh, available uh, commercially. Now, uh, this fixative can just uh, board it and uh, use it uh, in the lab. Doesn't need to really prepare them like the, the old days. So this we talk about specimen with high mucus content, sticky uh, specimen. So second specimen with high protein content. So some fluid uh, based on the, the origin of uh, uh, collection site. So some, some uh, fluid will uh, originally uh, contain a high amount of protein. For example, uh, plural fluid, peritoneal and pericardial they may be preserved by refrigeration for uh, a bit longer than mucus, for about up to two days. And for specimen with low mucus or protein content, for example, urine and your cerebrospinal fluid, uh, usually this kind of sample because of the, um, the condition of the sample, which is usually um, Hypo, uh, the, the osmotic pressure is very low, so it tends to light the, 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 the cells. So they need to be processed uh, as soon as possible. And even if these uh, samples, low mucus, uh, low protein content, uh, CSF, uh, if kept uh, refrigerated, they can only be preserved for one or two hours. And again, if received out of uh, hours, uh, after office hours uh, in the weekend, or delay is being expected before delivery to the lab, uh, fixative should be added to the specimen. So among the protocol is uh, this kind of samples can be fed with an equal volume of 50% ethanol. Means if you got uh, 10 mil uh, CSF, uh, we're really able to collect, uh, to receive uh, more than 3 mil CSF uh, sample. So they are very, very uh, low in volume and they are very precious. And they also need to be processed uh, within one, one, one or two hours. So you can imagine this, this is one of, and it, they are collected from your uh, backbone. So this, this CSF is a very special, uh, precious uh, sample and very fragile. So the way to uh, fix it of course, uh, fresh, uh, freshly prepared sample is being preferred. So if can, we, we cannot uh, achieve that somehow, so fix with an equal volume of uh, ethanol, uh, 10 mil of CSF with uh, 10 mil of 50% ethanol. So it, it will be very simple protocol. So those are among, this is among the way that we can uh, preserve the sample. But nowadays, there are, there are many uh, commercially uh, prepared uh, executive that can be uh, bought from the uh, supplier. Okay, we just uh, finished talking on the uh, refrigeration, how to keep uh, samples if, if, if we cannot process them uh, quickly. So third, preparation of material for microscopic examination. So we begin with a gross assessment of non-gynae specimen. So this is the, the part where 
the sample already being delivered to our lab. So we receive the sample. So you can observe here. This is this is a uh, I think plural fluid. So the gross assessment includes of of course first you need to check the patient name and ID, and then second record the gross appearance. So when you look at it, uh, this is giving uh, the appearance of um, creamy, milky. So that's how you record the gross appearance. You just uh, wrote in the report uh, milky uh, fluid, so creamy ap uh, appearance uh, fluid. And then third, record the volume. So among the, the guideline in, in recording the gross appearance of cytology specimen, uh, we need to look on the color, uh, texture, and uh, appearance of uh, other uh, materials in the specimen. So for color, it can be colorless. For example, uh, in urine and CSF, uh, clear, uh, either it is a uh, blood stain, slightly blood stain, uh, brownish, uh, yellowish, uh, or pale brown, and then the, the texture, whether it is uh, thick, like, like a cream cheese, uh, creamy, uh, watery, uh, bloody, uh, mucoid uh, means contain a lot of a lot of mucus, so you know it's going to be uh, sticky or turbid, and others uh, appearance of blood clots or other semi-solid uh, substance such as uh, tissues. So why uh, we need to record the gross appearance? Uh, because the gross appearance. Uh, are very important for the pathologists uh, in order to assist uh, them in making uh, a, a, a precise uh, diagnosis. So first, on the creamy and milky white, uh, usually this kind of uh, specimen, uh, they will contain a high amount of lipid, okay? fat. So fat giving the appearance of a creamy color. Uh, chocolate, uh, brownish, uh, Maybe because of pigmented melanoma, a kind of uh, tumor or cancer. A greenish brown, uh, maybe the, the fluid has been uh, contaminated with uh, bile and uh, mucoid. Maybe because of uh, somehow giving us a clue, probably the, the, this is coming from uh, mucin producing tumor. For example, uh, adenocarcinoma, uh, the goblet cells, they are the one that producing the older uh, mucin. Okay, for example, uh, this uh, a two bottles of peritoneal fluid. So the gross appearance, uh, how you would interpret it, how you should interpret them is uh, the appearance is milky white. So you just uh, wrote there on the gross appearance, milky white and the volume is uh, about six liters. So the volume, you don't have to, to, to really measure it to be precise, but just uh, a close estimation on, on the, the real uh, volume of the specimen. So imagine this six liter of fluid was taken from the peritoneal. Uh, peritoneal is the area uh, within your, your, your stomach and your lung, this, the, all the, those cavities uh, contain this fluid. The doctor managed to uh, collect six liters of fluid from, from that particular patient. This is a lot, okay. So imagine how large is the, the, the belly of the uh, patient. Any questions uh, until now? No, no, sir. Okay. Eh? So do we need to take a short break ke, ataupun nak proceed? Proceed. Proceed. proceed eh? Okay, okay, very good. Okay, uh, preparation of smear. So once we uh, already uh, received the sample and then we already uh, 
take note on the, the patient name, the RN number, the patient ID, and then you already uh, do the gross appearance examination and you already uh, measure the volume of the specimen. So this is the time where we need to prepare the slides. Okay, so the main reason why this specimen being sent to the non gynae uh, cytology lab, it is because we as uh, the uh, lab people, we, need, we are the one who's going to do the preparation of slides. The pathologists will uh, never touch on this part. They, they only uh, uh, focus on cytomorphology. Of course, we also do cytomorphological diagnostic. So there's preparation of smears or slides. So first, uh, some sample, we can just uh, directly uh, produce a direct smear. I mean, uh, from the uh, patient, maybe some secretion from uh, some part of the patient body. For example, here, uh, breast secretion from the nipple. So we can just directly do, uh, we can just straight away do a direct smear without the need to collect the, the fluid into a container and send, send them to the lab. Uh, spontaneous uh, nipple discharge uh, or any discharge are produced by breast uh, massage uh, are collected and those those uh, few drops of fluid uh, coming out from the affected area will be will be uh, applied to the slide directly uh, and then followed by immediate fixation so i just uh, mentioned earlier fixation for non gynae we have uh, two type of uh, slight fixation, a smear fixation. First is uh, wet fixation using alcohol and second by air dry for Romanowski staining. And second for watery uh, fluid. So any fluid um, come in the form of uh, uh, fluidic uh, appearance, uh, watery, Example, urine, uh, colonic washing, effusion, synovial fluid, and any uh, other uh, fluid from, from various parts of our body. So transfer specimen into several. So you can imagine, uh, we already received the specimen now. We, we already performed the gross uh, and volume. So now we open the specimen and transfer them into several tubes. Okay, several centrifuge tubes. So we're talking about normal or universal centrifuge, the one that uh, always available in the labs. Okay, and then these centrifuge centrifuge tubes that you uh, will be choosing depend on the volume of the sample. Okay, earlier we we the one that I showed you the patient uh, sample consists of six liter of fluid. So of course we need a lot of uh, centrifuge tubes and with a larger volume, maybe 50 mil tubes. Okay, so several, several mean can be two up to 10 tubes, okay? Uh, we try to process as much as possible, depending on the specimens uh, volume. So the steps, um, once we, the, the procedure itself is uh, more or less exactly the same as the one that you will be, will be performing on other fluid in other labs, for example, in, in chemistry lab. So it's, it's more or less, it's similar steps. Okay, you can imagine that um, the fluids that are already being transferred to a few uh, tubes will be uh, placed in the centrifuge, normal centrifuge, or we call uh, some sometimes it is called uh, universal centrifuge. So centrifuge this fluid at 3000 RPM for five minutes and then prepare while waiting for the centrifuge uh, centrifugation process to finish we can start uh, to prepare slides so, so, so get your clean uh, slides and then start labeling the slides a third check once uh, the uh, the centrifugation process uh, finished. Take out the tube, uh, take out the uh, centrifuge tubes with the uh, specimen inside. Uh, check for sedimentation of cells on the fluid. 
after that. So, but the things that we need now is the, is the sediment, the things that the cell pellet that uh, at the bottom of the tube. And then we don't need the, in, in uh, cytology, we don't need the superlatant. Of course, in chemistry uh, and other labs, they might need this uh, part of uh, specimen, but uh, not in, in uh, cytology. So we discard the fluid, the superlatant, and then we leave around uh, 0 0.5 to 2 mil. I mean, the bottom, do not discard everything, okay? Uh, leave the sediment on the bottom. And then check for the sediment. And then we transfer. This sediment is the, the materials that we need to, to, to smear onto the slides. And transfer to slide. Produce smears. Produce, I mean, produce as much uh, as possible, the smears. And we need to fix the smears. Okay. Uh, this uh, picture showing uh, the process of the samples already being, being trans, uh, transferred to various uh, centrifuge uh, tubes. Centrifuge are fluid at 3000 RPM for five minutes. So depending on the volume of this uh, specimen can be two or up to 10 or 12 uh, tubes for that particular uh, specimen. While waiting for the uh, Centrifuge uh, to finish, uh, we can start preparing slides, uh, put labels, always label with two ID on each patient. Of course, we, we can have uh, people with the same name or sometimes uh, we might cross uh, with people with same ID, we never know. So, uh, but it is uh, uh, kind, of, kind of very rare to, to uh, to cross uh, with, with people with the same name and same ID. So at least put two uh, ID on the slides. If you can put more, better, but two is the minimum. And prepare as many slides as possible. I mean, uh, you might expect based on the condition of the uh, samples, the specimen. So maybe we can prepare up to 24 slides, okay? for one specimen. So this uh, an example of uh, example of uh, specimen form after the centrifugation. So the bottom, the cell pellet at the bottom of the tube is the sediment. So when we discard the sample, the supernatant, so we discard everything up to here. So do not discard everything, okay? So we need to save this part for morphological examination. So this is the picture of showing, uh, this, this picture showing uh, the process of discarding the uh, supernatant. Do, do it uh, gently, uh, slowly, because we, we only want to discard the, the supernatant. And then check for the sediment. So from here, we, we, we can uh, estimate, we can begin to estimate how many slides can be prepared. Sometimes the sediment, uh, maybe the cell content is uh, uh, a lot in that particular specimen. So the sediment might, might consist of half of the tube. It, it can happen. So we can imagine how many slides that we need to prepare because we need to uh, process almost everything that we can collect. And then transfer the sediment to slide. So there, there are various ways to do this. Uh, you can directly transfer from the tube, mix the sediment inside the tube, and then you just pour the sediment on the slide. Or you can use a uh, posture pipette here, or you can use uh, applicator stick, depend on the, what are the protocols being used in that uh, lab, and depending on the, uh, the, uh, the nature of the specimen. Any question on this part? Up, up to here, the production of uh, slides. Is it very clear? Or somebody, uh, if you have a burning question to ask. Uh,
clear doctor so clear hmm. because uh, this is very simple kan okay and then sorry i think i have somebody okay and then we can uh, start okay after we transfer the sediment to the slide and we can begin a production of smears using the this is one of uh, uh, the method that can be used in producing the the one of uh, the technique that can be applied in in uh, doing the smearing process okay this is called back to back technique so we use uh, two slides that already uh, labeled here two clean slides so we face them each other with uh, each other okay facing each other so the surface that going to be uh, smeared facing each other and then uh, yeah, compress we put uh, some pressure on the on the sediment and then uh, push it outwards until both of the slides uh, surfaces uh, contain the uh, smear of, of that uh, sediment so this is the back-to-back -back technique so we have a various technique actually this is one of the uh, most popular uh, uh, most commonly used so you also have a uh, uh, pick and smear and then we have a few other that I, I didn't I didn't even know the name here and then uh, after immediately after the slide being prepared so in non gaini again i will stress uh, it, uh, here we need to prepare most of this uh, specimen so some specimen we just uh, they only need the wet uh, fixation for example sputum uh, i think uh, uh, i believe uh, for urine also we only need the wet fixation uh, sputum uh, urine um, bronchial uh, washing but most of the specimen they will receive uh, peritoneal fluid uh, csf and any other fluids so we need to prepare two kind of uh, uh, fixation by by going through two kind of fixation first is the wet fixation where we uh, submerge the the smeared area into uh, alcohol and then Second uh, type of fixation is air dry fixation. We, I mean, we just leave the other slide to uh, dry out in the uh, room temperature. So, we, and sometimes you can, uh, if there is a, this an urgent uh, case, we can fasten the drying process using a, a hair dryer, or they even have a special device. That will provide uh, wind to to quickly dry uh, F movement. That we think. Just now, I just uh, uh, talk about two uh, way of preparing the smear. First, uh, direct smear. For anything, uh, very little amount of fluid, for example, uh, nipple uh, discharge, you can uh, straight away uh, drop the fluid into a slide and prepare the slide. Okay. Drop the sample here. I mean, the patient is around. We just, the, we just collect the, the fluid, drop straight away to the slide, and then we prepare using this method and fix them. Or if it is a large, come in a large amount, we go through all the process of uh, separate, separating them into few tubes and then centrifuge them and collect the sediment okay we we also uh, will be going re to receive uh, we will be receiving uh, samples for non gaini which is uh, the the volume is uh, very little they mean sometimes less than 3 to 5 mil sometimes even 1 mil Okay, for example, for CSF. So for this kind of uh, specimen, uh, 
very little in, in, in volume. So we need to perform uh, another process. Still going to centrifuge them. So this, this is called uh, cytospin or cytocentrifugation process. So for how do we determine what kind of uh, specimen that we just do the normal uh, centrif centrifugation process or this specimen need to straight away go to uh, cytospin. Okay, imagine that we have two type of centrifuge in the lab. Okay, any samples that come in very large volume, large amount, uh, very obviously uh, we, we, we know that we, we, going, we are going to collect uh, uh, large, a huge number of sediments so we can do the uh, normal centrifuge process, normal centrifuge. Second, imagine a very safe uh, fluid that is very uh, uh, little in volume, less than three mil. That is, three mil is around two or three drops. At most is five drops, okay? So, and then they're coming from CSF, from somebody uh, uh, backbone. So you don't want to mess up. You, you don't want to uh, accidentally uh, uh, mess up messing things with uh, processing, in the processing, okay? So the doctor uh, uh, expect, uh, expect that you can, you can uh, properly process this kind of sample. So there are two types of sample that we need to go through uh, for cytospin. The first one is uh, if we, we receive clear watery sample, less than five mil, for example, CSF, uh, vitreous uh, fluid, this is from the joints, uh, urine sometimes this patient is the condition is, uh, is not so good uh, we can only uh, the doctor can only be able to collect a, a small number of uh, urine okay any other specimen that showing very little to no observable sediment after normal uh, centrifugation so freshly collected CSF uh, need to process uh, ASAP immediately. And then for type two, sometimes we 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 can still uh, receive a specimen in uh, a decent volume. Okay, maybe uh, fifty mil or one liter, even one liter. But when we do the normal uh, centrifugation process, uh, there is uh, no. Uh, sediment can be observed. I mean, uh, you don't know whether this, this sample do they uh, contain cells or they do not because you cannot uh, macroscopically, uh, macroscopically uh, observe the formation of sediment after the process of normal uh, centrifugation. So for this kind of uh, uh, specimen, with very little volume, uh, of, uh, very little amount of sediment after centrifugation, So we, this type of type one, type one and type two specimen, first type one specimen that is uh, very little in volume and type two, we don't even know, even though they come in a decent uh, uh, volume, 50 mil or uh, one liter, but we cannot observe the sediment. So in order to make sure that, that at least we try to collect the cells, so this, two types of specimen need, need to go through the cytospin process. So the step in cytospin, so we need to prepare two cytospin slides uh, using 0.5 mil for thick fluid or one mil for thin fluid, meaning very watery fluid, clear watery fluid in the cyto chamber. And then uh, start this centrifugation process at 1200 RPM in five minutes using the cytospin. Cytospin is uh, exactly uh, using a similar concept with the normal centrifuge with a, a bit difference in, in setup. And after that, for cytospin process, uh, prepare minimum, maybe minimum mean if you can go uh, higher, of course we, can, we will, we will uh, prepare more, but if the sample is, uh, sample amount is too little, maybe two mil or one mil. So at least we need to prepare one slide uh, 
uh, for head right. So we can stain with um, May Grawal Jimsa. This is one of uh, one, one, one type of stain that being applied for head right smear. And then another slide for alcohol fix for pet stain. So type one smear preparation using cytospin for sample less than five mil, for example CSF. So this is the cytospin centrifuge. So the first uh, step is to uh, drop, so put four to five drops in cytospin chamber. So this cytospin chamber consists of a chamber for for where you put the specimen a filter paper and the glass slides uh, clamp together with this uh, um, cytoclip, okay? And then after that, I place all the uh, cytospin slides into the cytospin centrifuge and the centrifuge at uh, 1000 or 1200 for five or 10 minutes. And then of course, after that, immediately go for wet and air dry fixation. So for wet fixation, we place the slide into the fluid, the alcohol, for 95. We just put the slide. Actually, we can put the slide anywhere. It doesn't need to be on top of the on, on top of the 95% uh, alcohol coping jar here. You can put uh, anywhere. Uh, any place, uh, any area that might find uh, convenient for you. Uh, this is just for to show that they, they, they come together in one place. So put the slides on top of the coping jar and let it uh, dry there. So one is completely dry. So the slide is called a dry smear. And then uh, Again, still on cytospin for type 2 uh, specimen. Uh, smear preparation using cytospin for sample uh, with no observable sediment after normal uh, centrifugation. So discard the supernatal. So this, this process, the, the earlier process, is exactly the same as how uh, you would process a normal uh, Specimen for non gyne that come with a uh, uh, reasonable uh, volume. And then, then mix the sediment, drop, uh, put a few drops uh, inside the spin chamber, and again, the same process centrifuge at 1000 RPM. And actually, this protocol for uh, centrifugation process uh, can vary. Uh, from lab to lab. Okay, sometimes they put 1,200 for five minutes, sometimes 1,500, three minutes. So it depends on the, uh, the, the procedure that uh, being used on that lab. But still, they, they still are uh, being done, are being performed uh, to achieve the same uh, result. Okay, for semi-solid uh, or mucoid uh, samples such as sputum, if the sputum are received uh, in, a, in an unprocessed uh, mucus in a container, so you can prepare direct smear by using a pick and smear technique. So this is very simple. And then the, the, the prepared smear immediately fix them into both of the slides into 95% ethanol for wet, wet fixation. And then other than sample for, for uh, respiratory tract other than sputum we we can uh, also we might receive also receive uh, bronchial uh, brushings usually receive with few prepared slides during the slide already prepared by the uh, technologies that uh, assisting the doctor or the nurses already fixed with centanol uh, together with the brush in normal slide or bronchial uh, washers and bronchial uh, alveolar lavage. Uh, this two type of specimen, they need to go the normal 
centrifugation process because they usually come uh, in a good uh, volume. I mean, uh, for example, 50 mil. So we add any samples that come uh, uh, the amount more than 5 mil. So we should uh, go process them with a normal uh, centrifugation uh, uh, way. So for the sputum, pick and smear technique is where we just uh, try to pick out the sputum from the uh, universal container and then smear them on a the slide and immediately fix in 95% ethanol. So this is the uh, how you would label. You should you should uh, label the slides with two ID two of the uh, patient ID and the area the suggested area that uh, when you do the smearing. Okay, we already talked uh, about uh, how can we process a, a specimen. Uh, that comes in a, a decent volume, I mean uh, one liter or two liter by normal centrifugation. For those with a very uh, low volume, less than five mil, uh, we process them with cytospin. For specimen that is uh, come in a uh, condition of semi-solid or mucoid, such as mucus, we can do pig uh, and smear technique. And for non gynae we also uh, will come across um, heavily hemolyzed samples. I mean, the sample that we receive for non gynae they come with, uh, with high content of RBCs. So if the sample is hemorrhagic or reddish, the smear should be prepared from the buffy coat layer of the specimen. So there are uh, two ways how can we process uh, this uh, hemo heavily hem hemolyzed samples? So we never disc discard or reject any hemorrhagic uh, specimens for non gynae because we can uh, so we can still process them. But we don't want the RBC in the sample, the hemorrhagic condition of this, uh, the specimen interfere with the uh, diagnostic uh, process. So we need to, as best as we could, to discard or to, to reduce the hemorrhagic condition of the specimen, we need to reduce the amount of RBC in, in that specimen. So one of the way is, first we can uh, just collect the buffy coat layer of the specimen. Okay, once we um, do the normal uh, centrifugation technique, discard the supernatant, and then we, we, we can observe of course, uh, in a bloody uh, specimen, the RBC will be at the bottom. And usually we can uh, also observe formation of buffy coat in between the supernatant and the RBC. So we collect the buffy coat area uh, slowly, gently, do not uh, also collect the RBC. And then transfer this to the other tube. After that, transfer those buffy coat to the slide. And then again, the same uh, method. You can choose, uh, for example, back-to-back -back technique in preparing the smear and then fix in wet fixation, alcohol, and also air drying. And we can also use another method besides Collecting the buffy coat is by using uh, lysing solution. So lysing technique can be used to lyse the excessive RBCs. Lysing technique is done by introducing a lysing solution that, of course, will lyse the, the excess RBC. Examples of different protocols uh, in doing this. First, we can uh, use a carnois uh, fluid. So these carnois fluids need to be always uh, prepared fresh daily. Uh, the formula, um, absolute ethanol, chloroform, and also glacial acetic acid. 
So the ratio will be 6, 3, uh, 1. Second Clark solution um, consists of absolute ethanol with uh, the glycyl acetic acid, 3 to 1. And of course, nowadays we have uh, a lot of uh, commercially available solution, for example, satellites and many other more. If we choose to do the lysing solution technique, uh, the thing, uh, the, the precaution uh, is to, before staining, after using the lysing solution, it is important to uh, wash out the lysing solution by immersing the slide in 95% ethanol, uh, for example, of, uh, around 15 minutes uh, minimum to stop the lysing solution by washing out all the remaining uh, lysing solution on the uh, uh, smear. Okay, uh, now we, I think this is the last uh, part for, for today's lecture. So we're still talking about uh, pre preparation of non tiny sample. So somehow, sometimes, we also might uh, receive uh, specimens in a very large uh, amount, okay? Very big volume specimen. So for example, maybe six uh, liters, 10 liters, okay? So, the preparation for this uh, big volume specimen, uh, more or less, uh, is the same as what we have, uh, what I have uh, mentioned earlier in this uh, lecture, but with uh, a few uh, preliminary steps that need to be taken. Okay. Uh, once we receive the the big volume specimen, so of course, like any other specimen that. Uh, arrive in the lab, we check the name and ID, and, ID, and we, we do gross appearance and volume. But for this big volume specimen, because it is, uh, the amount is too large, so we need to, one, one of uh, the method is to leave the specimen in uh, around one hour in order to let the sediment Uh, on the bottom of the container and then after that uh, discard the supernatant this is because we cannot afford to uh, centrifuge the whole specimen because the, the volume is too large so discard the supernatant we just uh, wind the sediment so for the sediment here collect the sediment pour them into a beaker after that we can uh, begin the same process, pour them into a few uh, tubes, of course, label and then centrifuge. So this process will be the exactly the same as uh, what I have uh, discussed earlier. Okay, I'll discard the supernatant and then transfer to slides, back to back technique, uh, fix, and dry. Okay, uh, that's uh, everything uh, for today. So any question for Today's lecture. Ya. Yep. Maksudnya nanda ini ni memang kita main dengan fluid je lah. Uh, yes, I think 90% of the time mm -hmm. kita memang main dengan fluid. Sometimes, oh, dia lain uh, dengan histo I rasa. Ah, uh, dia lain. Longgar ini okay. dia, dia macam uh, in between histo, okay? Kalau kalau gai ni of course kita bercakap pasal uh, sample from uh, inilah uh, gai ni satu logik kan so satu mm -hmm. area sahaja for non gai ni it can be anywhere mana-mana yang kita boleh collect apa-apa dalam bentuk fluid okey uh, bentuk fluid ni tak semestinya liquid kan sometimes uh, mungkin uh -huh. uh, tisu yang lembut boleh juga ah uh -huh. Kalau macam breast cancer, cancer. Mm -hmm. 
Itu under histo ke under nandai ni kalau untuk nak tengok dia punya sel? Okay, uh, for example eh, uh, macam breast cancer Usually uh, the, the initial step tu sebab breast cancer ni selalunya bila patient tu uh, detect dia macam ada uh, benjolan-benjolan kan So benjolan tu sometimes dia solid, I mean benjol tu memang semuanya adalah tisu Sometimes yang benjol tu dalam dia ada cecair sebagai cis, so cis dalam tu ada fluid Kadang-kadang dia dua-dua ada. So, kalau uh, bila dalam proses untuk uh, diagnose, for example uh, breast cancer ni, so patient datang uh, doktor akan check, so, doktor akan ambil spesimen, uh, selalunya serentak dia akan cocok jarum, kira jarum tu kira untuk histo jarum dia lebih, jarum dia lebih besar. So dia nak ambil, dipanggil sebagai fine needle biopsy. So needle dia taklah besar sangat tapi saya rasa mungkin uh, 10 kali kan dia besar daripada jarum yang guna untuk cucuk ambil darah tu sebab kita nak ambil tisu. Uh, awak imagine awak nak uh, guna straw untuk sedut jelly macam tu kan. Uh, so needle dia kira, kira taklah besar sangat tapi uh, just nice to collect uh, tisu. So tentak dengan tu apa yang di collect kalau doktor tu collect ada fluid dia akan ambil fluid tu masuk dalam container dia akan buat cytology so serentak sampel yang dia collect tissue tadi dia hantar ke histo dan fluid yang dia collect tu dia akan hantar ke cyto so bila sampai ke lab kita akan proses kita akan stain so, kita akan buat part kita kalau histo kita sebagai medical scientist kita memang takkan uh, sentuh memang pathologist akan buat diagnosis 100% kalau untuk Saitu je yes, kita boleh buat ada first sebagai first screener tu. Dan nanti patologi akan combine the uh, diagnosis result untuk kedua-dua sampel ni, sampel saitu dan blisto. Itu cara dia. Ah oh, okey, thank you sir. Okey ada soalan lagi saya mengharapkan soalan-soalan baru sonok sikit kan. Sir. Yes. Kalau macam wet fixation tu kita fix itu adakah kita tinggal di dalam alkohol ke ataupun kalau kita celup dia kita akan biarkan dia air dry. Okey untuk uh, wet fixation ya. Yeah. So wet fixation ni tu soalan yang bagus sebab kita imagine uh, macam slide cyto kan slide back smear. Slide back smear adalah contoh wet fixation actually. Walaupun kita receive nanti dia, dia dah tak basah dah. Tapi uh, sebenarnya dia dah di uh, apa ni? fix dengan method wet fixation. Sebab untuk pack stain kan nanti later pack stain dia memerlukan wet fixation. So kalau untuk non gynae ni bila kita dah ambil kita dah prepare smear tadi semasa sel apa smear tu masih basah kalau bila kita prepare smear lepas tu saya saya tunjuk gambar dia okey kita prepare smear ni lepas tu kita dah tarik tu dia masih lagi basah tu within the few second cepat-cepat kita masukkan dalam alkohol. Kalau kita pegang seminit dua minit bila dia kering sahaja dia dah jadi air dry. Okay. Tu okay, first step lah. So bila masuk tu eh. Tadi soalan uh, um, ni pasal mas- bila dah masuk kan. So, bila dah masuk tu sebenarnya dia tak ada tempoh yang uh, wajib lah. Minimum 15 minutes. Itu minimum. Tapi kalau orang nak tinggal situ Uh, dua jam ke saya pernah tinggal setengah hari tak ada masalah sebab dia stay dalam tu dan alkohol tu sebab bila, bila dia dalam tu dia akan sama je alkohol tu akan start actually walaupun kita panggil wet fixation alkohol tu sebenarnya dia keluarkan air tu alkohol dalam tisu kita ada air bila masuk dalam alkohol alkohol sebenarnya dia akan uh, sedut keluar air tu so actually sel tu kering juga cuma dia bukan melalui air dry lah so, bila sampai dia achieve the the final result tu dia dah betul-betul uh, fix awak tinggal berapa lama pun actually tak ada masalah cuma jangan terlalu lama takut lama sangat mungkin tertanggal tisu tu sebab dia duduk dalam keadaan basah eh. so bila dah dah uh, minimum 50 minutes tadi awak keluarkan keluarkan boleh biar dia kering tak ada masalah as long as kita dah fix dulu dengan wet fixation kita dah masuk rendam dalam alkohol Dah rendam, ambil, keluar 
kita boleh biar dia kering, tak ada masalah. Kalau air dry, memang asal-asal pun tak ada masalah alkohol, tak ada guna apa, biar dia kering sahaja. Itu beza dia. So, apa yang bila kita dah uh, fix dengan wet position dan angkat dia, dia akan pergi kepada pep stain. Yang air dry, kita akan pergi kepada MGG stain. Faham tak? Biasa saya tadi. Okey, saya faham. Terima kasih. Okey, ada satu, at least satu soalan lagi sebelum kita uh, tutup sesi hari ni. Kalau lepas uh, air dry tu kan, mm-hmm. dia air dry uh, in room temperature ke? Ke like dia ada tools juga untuk keringkan dia macam hair dryer ke? Or okay, untuk well, ini, um, antara metode-metode nak air dry tu ya? Haa. Uh-uh. Okey, air dry uh, ni uh, paling senang kita just uh, biar je dekat room temperature, maknanya kita biar dia macam jemur lah, tinggal di di atas para ke, contoh dalam gambar ni atas kopinja tu kan tinggal je ataupun kita boleh guna uh, apa ni uh, hair dryer tapi hair dryer tu jangan jangan set temperature dia yang panas, paling panas tu kita just set yang untuk angin saja. boleh kan kita set, saya rasa boleh hair dryer, saya tak guna hair dryer sebab tak mesti kurang so orang yang pakai hair dryer mungkin boleh jawabkan boleh tu tak? Boleh sini. Oh, tak apa-apa kan air Okay. Saya expect perempuan je buat. Okay, tak apalah. Um, so, boleh. Maknanya kita boleh pakai. Jangan guna yang panas. Kalau panas, dia akan merosakkan sel tu. Dan juga, kalau lab tu dia mungkin volume dia sample terlalu banyak. So, dia memang akan boleh beli satu alat. Alat tu dia macam kipas dia sebenarnya. So, dia akan keluarkan udara kering. So, untuk membantu proses. Uh, air dry fixation ni. So once dia dah kering, sama juga macam uh, wet fix tadi tu, kita boleh biarkan je dulu. Uh, tak tak perlu lah kita nak terus terus stain. Dia, dia tak, tak stain secepat mungkin bagus tapi tak perlu lah sampai nak urgent sangat. Terus stain. Uh, psikologi ni dia tak dalam dia urgent tapi tak dalam macam tu urgent kan kita boleh tinggal maybe 3 hours, 4 hours kalau kita nak stain sekali dengan bash dia. Nanti kita tunggu, uh, tunggu sampel-sampel lain Uh, dah banyak, dah penuh uh, kita punya tu, baru kita stain, baru uh, kita hantar dekat uh, patologis. Kalau lab kita tu mungkin tak ada sampel, mungkin satu hari satu sampel je, uh, mungkin bolehlah kita buat-buat. Lepas kita dah boring, kita terus uh, stain. Okay. Uh, I think that's about it for today. Thank you very much. Uh, 